I'm the Busy Bee Mom. Welcome to my sewing room. Today we're going to be working on a stretch velvet bridesmaid's dress. Now I had someone text me and say, hey, can you have a bridesmaid's dress? I was like, sure. I just figured it was one of the chiffon mail order one people are getting nowadays off Amazon. But instead she showed up with this. I don't know if I've ever had a stretch velvet before. And it needs like six inches taken off. So this will be an adventure. And Follow along and we will get it figured out. I'm going to walk you through my thought process that I do after I do the fitting. So I have her put the dress on, she put the shoes on that she was going to wear, and then I pin it up so that it's just just a little bit above the floor. I don't want it dragging on the floor, but you know you don't want it too high. So I try to pin it just a little bit above the floor. But it's not an exact science because she's standing on carpet and she's we're chatting and it's you know kind of an informal thing and I don't have a fancy stand. Um, we're just standing on the carpet in my sewing room. So afterwards, I take measurements based on where the pins are. I draw a circle. This is my back seam, my two side seams, and then. You know, the front doesn't have a seam, but anyway, it's really important to make sure that when you fold it up the back and your sides, when you pin it up, that you line up your seam. Let me show you example what I'm talking about. So when I'm going along the bottom and I pin this up, make sure that this is lined up with your seam. You have your seam lined up when you pin it up. Don't make sure it's not over to the side. That way you get a very accurate measurement. So when I got all done with that, I measured how much I had pinned up and I had five and a half inches on this side, six and a half inches on this side. That's the left and right side. On the back, I had seven and a quarter inches and on the front, I had six. So usually I just kind of average these, but I'm thinking, Boy, six and a half is pretty much halfway between the six and 7.5. So I'm thinking I must have hemmed this a little, this must have been a little on the long side. So we're just gonna do the 6.5 here. And I want it a little longer in the back. So she has a little bit of a train, but I want it to be really practical. This lady has three boys, young, <laughs> so. She's gonna be really, you know, moving in this dress. So let's do seven here. So it's a little longer in back, maybe just skimming the floor instead of a little above. So, okay. So that's my thought process. I'm gonna do six inches in the front, six and a half on the sides and seven in the back. And that's a nice, will give me a nice gradual front to back. And it's based on the measurements. Now, normally when you do like chiffon, you do a really skinny tight rolled hem. I don't figure seam allowance because it's so minimum. But this, you actually have to do a hem. You see how they did before. So I'm gonna figure a half inch seam allowance. So that means that I'm actually going to cut 5.5 inches off here, cut six inches here, cut 6.5 here, and cut six here. Now, if that didn't make sense to you, that's okay. I just wanted to share my thought process so these are my actual mounts that I'm gonna trim off. So this is my front, left and right, back or right and left, I don't know, it doesn't matter because it's gotta be the same. All right, so that's my um, thought process on that. I'm gonna show you real quick how I do some of the marking. I'm gonna use a Taylor's chalk for this um, fabric. So I have this, I actually picked up at a garage sale last weekend. I bought a bag of miscellaneous sewing supplies for a buck. So nice tailor's chalk or soap. I don't know what it is, but marks doesn't smell. Anyway, so this dress actually has a slit. So this is one of my side seams because my slit is right here. I marked my six inches. That leaves me my half inch seam allowance on that side. And I came down to my other seam, which is my middle back seam, and I marked six and a half. And then I also found the middle point by measuring this with my tape measure, divide by two, find the middle point, and I marked six and a quarter because that's halfway between 
six and six and a half. So that gives me my arc. Now, the problem with sewing is if I put this on here, it gives me a straight line. This is not a straight line. I'm not mirroring a straight line. So I have this chain trick that I use. I put the chain on one spot and then I gently drag it up to the other spot. I'll hold this spot here, take my chain, and kind of gently drag it up to my other spot. And that gives me a curve, curved line, as opposed to a ruler, which gives me a straight line. And then I can just very carefully take my tailor's chalk and go alongside of that, just very carefully marking, because obviously the chain's gonna move all over the place if I touch it, so. But that is my chain trick that I use to mimic the curve. And I mean, you could continue to divide. You could divide this, get another halfway point, measure up again, just depending on how big of a space you're doing and how, if you just stand back and look at it visually. See, I think it looks a little low here, so I might check some measurements and tweak it a little bit, but. I think for the most part we're pretty good. Yeah, so anyway, that's the chain trick that I use for getting a curved image. Wanted to show you something real quick. So if you look really closely at this part in the original hem, they actually came up and back down again. And this should be straight smooth here. If I lay my tape measure here, you can see how it has a problem. So when I measure up, I'm not gonna measure up from this edge. I'm gonna measure up from where that edge should have been because I don't want my hem to make the same mistake theirs did. I'm gonna have enough trouble without copying their mistakes. And the cat is on the dress. Okay, you gotta get down. So don't, if, it, if they made a mistake, don't copy their mistake, fix it. Okay, I've got my chalk line um, marked. I've already made one mistake, but I fixed it. <laughs> that first section I showed you, I thought was one of the side panels. That was actually the entire front half of the dress. I'm so used to dresses that are gathered and have way more fullness, so I had to redo all those marks. But if you take your sleeve and rub it, it comes off. And the more I work with this, the more I'm suspicious that this is a bar of soap. But it works really good, and it was in with a bunch of sewing supplies, so is that an old trick, is to use soap? We'll find out when I wash my hands if they foam up. <laughs> well, what we're going to do next is I'm actually just going to chop this off. I'm planning on serging like they did using my serger for this edge, so I don't need to cut it on there. But I want to cut it like halfway so I have a chunk to play with. So I'm going to cut off about half of this, and I'm going to take this chunk and take it over to my serger and see if the serger will work on this fabric and look nice. All right, here's some of my playing around with my serger. One of the things I notice as this fabric is feeding into the machine, the weight of it is naturally kind of stretching it and I was concerned that that might be an issue. So I did it for a while just naturally, you know, letting it hang and having the natural weight. And then I also tried taking that resistance off and letting it feed in more without that resistance. But it actually worked better just to let it hang and have the fabric stretch a little bit. When I didn't do that, it kind of puckered. So just, that's one thing I learned. It's best just to let it hang and have that natural weight, stretches it a little bit, that's fine. Also, I didn't, my thread tension seems a little off. And when I looked up above, I noticed that two of my tension things aren't even set on the recommended setting. So I changed everything to the recommended setting let it just naturally hang. Didn't take the tension off, let the, just the fabric, the weight of it pull on it. And I think it looks, looks pretty good. So not gonna fiddle with that anymore. We're gonna call that good. So use your scraps, play around with your serger, get a feel for how to steer it, how to feed it, and if your thread tension's good. Now I'm gonna take it over to my regular sewing machine and I'm gonna play around with folding this up a little bit, about double, you know, about this much again down there, and sawing it and seeing how that's gonna look. 
All right, test run with my sewing machine. I just held it over and started sewing. I don't even know what kind of needles in my machine. And it's got gray thread in it, but you know what? It looks good. I was afraid that if it, a lot of times when I sew stretchy fabric, it stretches it and then you end up with this wavy hem. But I think because this is thick, even though it's stretchy, I'm not getting a wavy hem. I'm getting a nice smooth hem. I did notice that I was trying to, you know, I'm like, oh, I just fold it over twice the amount. Normally you would press it to do that. You can't press this fabric, I don't think. Hmm. That's another good thing to try on my, while I'm playing with this. So I just tried holding it over. Well, it just sort of, it was good, not too bad, then too skinny, then too fat. So definitely when I do my final step, I need to like pin that the right distance because just sort of hand feeding it was not working the best. So. Anyway, good news. I don't have to do anything fancy with my sheen other than probably take the gray thread out and find something, a more appropriate color. Good news. Took this over to my ironing board and you can iron it. The dress is made of 100% polyester, so I put my iron on the polyester setting. On normal velvet that I've worked with before, um, when you iron it, you take all the, the fuzz sticks down. You no longer have it fuzzy. You like glue it to itself. All those little hairs get glued flat to themselves. This stuff isn't really that thick of a velvet. It's more of a, I don't know, velveteen or something. I don't know. But I was able to iron it. I even held it on there for like 30 seconds. Of course, I count really fast to myself. So 20. And it didn't burn. It didn't melt. So we will be able, looks like, when we fold this up, we'll be able to iron it. All right. Now that we figured out how we're gonna sew this fabric, I wanna double check my lines first. So I went and found my yellow chalk line, or I am starting to think that that's not chalk, it might be so. Anyway, my line, put a pin on one side, put a pin on the other side. This is my slit. I wanna make sure that those two line up. Ah, uh, they don't quite line up. And I want to make sure that they're the same distance on this side as they are on the other side. So I've got my left and right side seams. I've got a tape measure pinned to my waistline. I'm just going to let this fall naturally and drape and see where the pin is on this side. Now that pins where my chalk line is on the other side. So we're looking about 41 and 3 quarters. So I'll move my tape measure to this side and adjust these as needed to be the same as that and so that they're equal and then I can go ahead and do my serging. You don't have to pre-cut it with using the serger. You can, because it'll cut it and bind it and we just practice that. And I feel confident that it's going to work. One issue we're going to have though is this edge was surged after. I think we'll be okay. Just go ahead and surge it. We'll talk about that later. Okay, we're good. Make sure your sides are even, left to right, and surge. Okay, edges surge. Next step is I'm going to press it and pin it. Uh, about half an inch, which is, this is about a quarter of an inch, so I'm just going to eye it and do that, and again, so I will put some pins in it and press it, and then I'm going to stitch it probably about in the middle of the surged area. Oh, before I um, stitch it, once I have it pinned and pressed, I'm going to hang it up again and check, make sure that those two side pieces where the slit are line up and that'll be pretty easy to adjust this time I can just fold it up a little bit more or a little bit less make sure that those two side slips line up perfectly make sure the back's a little longer than the front you know just after pinning and pressing it I'll take another look at it hanging up and just make sure it looks good before I stitch it so and then we'll be done so pin press double check and stitch 
All right, mission accomplished. We have the velvet hem. It was a lot easier than I thought. I thought that fabric would be hard to work with. My only regret is I used pale pink thread. I didn't have any of this kind of mauve. I thought it would disappear in the velvet. Eh, kind of wish I'd driven to the fabric store and gotten the thread, but oh well. Now we just need to do the lining. The lining is a very stretchy fabric. I have another video about um, how to hem a dress that's a stretch fabric. So I'm just going to probably link that at the end of this if I can figure out how to do that and direct you to that because I'm not going to make another video. This is just stretch knitwear which is nasty. What's interesting is the um, when they hemmed it previously they didn't do such an awesome job. See that's all not the greatest right there. There's a couple other spots. Oh right there. That's, you know, purchased from the store. It came like that. So, you know, if you struggle and have issues hemming, <laughs> look at what they did. It's not that much greater, not that much better. Um, so anyway, thought that we would struggle with the velvet and we'd have to figure out what kind of needle to use and thread tension and all that, but it wasn't bad at all. So, but... I think the important takeaway is to make sure that you test before you use your actual fabric. Cut off that sample piece, try it out, see what's going to work and what's not going to work. Um, if you don't have a serger, that's another thing you're going to have to try in your regular sewing machine. Can you use a zigzag stitch to do that? Or do you just need to do more of a traditional rolled hem where you flip it and then you flip it again? So. All right, well, I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. Have a great day.